Now it's a climactic moment. You want to know what happened next. That's what you want to know really badly. Now at that point, Allah says what He wanted to say all along. Allah says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُونَ No doubt the human being is truly disloyal to his master. Allah says the human being is not loyal to his master at all, for sure. SubhanAllah. We find a shawkan in the commenting, Kanud also means cutting apart, to, dis, to disassociate, to separate. Meaning the human being separates himself from the mastery and the, the slavery to Allah. He disassociates himself. This is a special type of ingrate, Kanud. First of all, this is Sigatul Mubalagha. So it's extremely ungrateful. It's not just ungrateful, it's extremely ungrateful. How do we know that? Because of the wow. In Kanud, this is Sigatul Mubalagha. Okay? One who remembers and makes only mention of the problems and complaints and never makes mention of favors. That's the guy, kind of person that's called Kanud. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودِ Especially when it comes to his master, he is extremely ungrateful. Extremely dis... The, the word Kanud also includes disloyal, has no loyalty. وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ And there is no doubt that he, meaning the human being, especially when it comes to that, is truly a witness. Shaheed is sifa mushabbaha. And this is what's, what we say something happening all the time. So the human being is a witness to his disloyalty when? All the time. It's not just one occasion. It's not just one scene that was just described. For, for this scene he was shahid. But now that he's come to this realization, he himself is a witness against himself all the time. All the time. The biggest testimony against you is your own self. Allah captures this in another place in the Qur'an. He says, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَعَابِيرًا No, the human being is in full view against his own self. Even if he makes excuses. Then Allah goes further. Incredible ayah. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْءِ لَشَدِيدٌ First of all, li in Arabic is used for li ajl. It's harf ajl. It's the purpose. It's, it's a word that gives purpose. Allah did not say for wealth. His love is intense. The word for is not used with wealth. The word for is used with love. إِنَّهُ لِحُبْ Not لِلْ خَيْرِ but لِحُبْ لِحُبْ الْخَيْرِ For the love of wealth, he is severe. He's intense. What does that mean? The word hub, if you look at the linguistic meaning in the Arabic language, we find as follows. The word hub means that it is defined as a perception of something desirable and one engaged in relentless pursuit of it. Hub in Arabic is defined that when you see something, you think it's very good for you. And then you do whatever you can to get it. When you're doing that, it is said you love it. So now, the word love of what? In the ayah, love of what? Hub al khayr. Khayr in Arabic means good. But every mufassir says, khayr in this ayah means mal, mal, wealth. So why not say lihub al mal? Why say what? Lihub al khayr. Instead of saying the love of wealth. For the love of wealth, he becomes, he's severe in his, in his love of wealth and for the sake of it. For the sake of keeping that love alive, he's tough, he's, 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 he's shadeed, and he's unflinching. And a shadda in Arabic is to tie a rope also. To, so he's tied up in it. He's locked in it. But here the word khayr I want to share with you an incredible comment which we find by Ibn Zayd rahimahullah Sammallahu al-mal khayran Allah named mal wealth in this ayah as khayr as good wa asa an yakuna sharran and it could be that it's bad isn't that true wealth could be good and wealth could also be bad so how come walakin an-nas yajidunahu khayran fa sammahu khayran it's because people people always think of wealth as what Good. So Allah called it good because Allah is basically translating the mentality of the kafir. For the kafir, there's no difference between wealth and good. Oh, you think that's good? Basically, what we're learning here is Allah Azza wa Jalla is being sarcastic. Oh, this is what you think is good? This is what you have so much love for and it's so intense for you? For the sake of preserving that love, you are so so bent upon it and so so uh, intense? SubhanAllah. إِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيمِ SubhanAllah. أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ Allah poses a question. Does he not already know? Does he then not know? إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ When? Does he not know of the time when? Whatever is in the graves will be not just turned upside down or brought out, 
Ba'thara in Arabic is a compilation according to Raghib uh, al-Asfahani of Ba'tha and A'thara. There are two words in Arabic that come together and make the, the ruba'i Ba'thara. What the verb means is, you know how you have a box full of stuff and you stick your hand in it to find something? And you're throwing everything around until you find that one thing you were looking for? To basically turn things upside down to pull something out. Allah uses that verb for what's going to happen in the graves. أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ Like a, it's gonna be, you're going to be yanked out of your graves like junk out of a box. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Doesn't he know of the time when whatever's in the graves will be yanked out like this and pulled out from deep within? He said, well, doesn't he know when everything in the graves will come out? And then he says, SubhanAllah, how he completes the subject from Surah Al-Zilzal. وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ حُصِّلَ أَوْ جُمِعَ مُحَصَّلًا فِي الصُّحُفِ أَوْ, م- أو مُيِّزَ ما في الصدور من خير أو شر. The word تحصيل in Arabic, حصيلة, rough translation, whatever is in the chest will be brought out. That's how it's commonly translated. But تحصيل in Arabic means to peel and extract something. From like, a, like you know how banana, you peel it and you take the banana out. Now imagine like you have you know, mango or other fruits, you, take the, you peel them, you get the inside, the meat of it, the mush that you really want, and you put it together and you, you pile it up together. Allah uses that word for what's in the chest. Everything will be scraped out of the chest. Like the chest will be peeled off and everything on the inside will be scraped out. If you remember something about the last surah, we studied, فَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ وَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ The previous surah mentioned the smallest deed, عمل. مَن يَعْمَلْ عمل. But actions are not in the chest. What's in the chest? This ayah is about the chest, right? The, the last ayah mentioned, the smallest deed. And this ayah is going even further. Even, not even a deed, what you are hiding inside. And what are we hiding inside? The surah already mentions, حُبُّ khair. The human being is hiding what inside? First of all, he's hiding a testimony of his disloyalty to Allah. That's what is in the chest already now. The other thing he's hiding is the love of wealth. The love of wealth. And this will be scraped out of him. So the previous ayah mentioned amal, and this ayah mentions, this surah mentions what's in the chest, the intent, the motives, the, the testimony on the inside, subhanAllah, completing the picture. Now you can say, inna rabbahum bihim yawma'idhim lakhabib. There is no doubt, their master, especially in regards to them, meaning these kuffar, who think there's nobody watching them, nobody knows what's in their heart, nobody knows what they did, especially in regards to them. Why did I say especially? Because bihim is muqaddam. We don't say, inna rabbahum yawma idhin lakhabirun bihim. If bihim was at the end, I wouldn't say the word especially. But this is ikhtisas, li'annahu yuqaddam. Right? So, inna rabbahum bihim yawma idhin lakhabir. Their, their master, no doubt, especially in regards to them, on that day, he will especially have khabr of them. He will be khabir of them. Fully aware. Fully knowledgeable. The word khabir, rhetorically in the Arabic language, is more powerful than alim. To be fully aware of the reality of something in every one of its details, inside and out. Why is that word more appropriate in this case? It's more appropriate because now we've come to the point where not only does Allah know what's on the outside, but also what's on the inside. We conclude this surah with a discourse on how the beginning of its rhetoric is tied to its end. The, the surah begins with the carefree who pillages and robs and is not worried about the consequence. Who doesn't think anybody knows what's going on. Nobody knows what happened here. Nobody will keep record. But the surah ends with someone who had full news and is fully aware with every last detail on what he did on the outside and what he's keeping on the inside. إِنَّ رَبَّهُمْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لَخَبِيرٌ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي بَلَكُمْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْحَكِيمِ وَنَفَعْنِي وَإِيَّاكُمْ بِالْآيَاتِ وَالذِكْرِ الْحَكِيمِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ الل